Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for episode 15 of Bumbling Through Birthright, which is the Dungeons and Dragons campaign where we try to figure out what the heck is going on in Birthright. I still have the names, I still don't know what they are and they're like, we're going here and I'm like, cool, 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 cool. missed the last session make sure that you do check out the link down below to get caught up and there's also a playlist if you wanted to watch all 14 before you get here binging is great but for a quick recap at the end of the last session we were trying to deal with a demon like a potential demon summoning that was going to happen and so we decided to summon something from the planes to help us out that's apparently going to be able to help us out. And last session ended with this giant fiend stepping out of the portal. He's got a sash, he's got a tiara, and session. Like I mentioned before, this is a character that came up in other planes campaigns that we did, like before I was even playing with them. His name's Vanathar, he's Mr. Abyssal long winded story there. If you want me to get into it, let me know in the comments down below and I'll either just answer there or I can do a video on it. I don't know. Uh, but with that, let's get into the story. So for this session, for I think the first time for this campaign, we had all the player characters there, which meant we had Roz, we had Rainier, we had Renolfer, we had Brindis, we had Yan, and we had Val six of us. I mean, if you're ever going to summon a fiend, when you have six players is kind of the time to do it. So Vanathar gets there and we kind of tell him the situation that's going on and he's like, oh, Vazdin Ra, I hate that guy. He's just trying to open up another front of the blood war. I am so down to help you. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep an eye on this guy over, you know, in the plains. And when he's alone, I'm going to summon you guys there and you can just kill him and it won't be a problem. I'm sure it will be a problem. Like, <laughs> I'm sure it will be. But he makes us give him permission to summon us whenever and we're all like, you can summon us whenever once. And he promises he'll return us if we're alive. And Val is like, is he just going to kill us so he doesn't have to return us and then we can join in his blood war? So... I think it's gonna be a problem. But with, you know, our permission, he pieces out, we leave and we go on our way, and not a problem yet, but like I said, I'm sure it'll come up at the most inopportune time. We then head up to Ravenroost Castle because we haven't done petitioners for a while, we were kind of dealing with war, and the last time we really had petitioners, they were all asking for Brindis's hand in marriage, which now that she is betrothed to King Ruthgar, not so much of a problem, so petitioners aren't as scary for her. Well, I mean, she hates petitioners all the time, but you know. There's six of us, we can help her out. So the first big group of things we need to deal with is all these ravens that have been coming to the castle because everybody left, right, and center is offering up their province, their city, their town, whatever, to be the location of the royal wedding. And there's politics involved, obviously, because we've got Stjordvik and we've got Svinnik, and in between was the Bandit Kingdom. If we have it in one of these provinces, people are gonna be like, you're playing favorites. So we pretty much have to have it in the old Bandit Kingdom but where's the best place? And we discuss and we think that probably up in the Sarkal province, which is where the Lady of the Woods was, is the best place because like, you know, we're bringing you honor because you kind of started this whole thing and also, you know, we really want you to be an active member in this government. So I think that's where we're leaning, but we haven't quite got there yet. We also have to do a lot of talking about the constitution because as the two countries are coming together, they need to write a new constitution or at least kind of manipulate theirs so that they, they work together. Because like we had a law against necromancy. They didn't have a law against necromancy. We had a law that protected druids. They didn't have a law that protected druids. And now neither of the country, or the, I guess the whole big country, does not have laws against necromancy or to protect druids. So I feel like, I don't know, the druid thing might be okay, but the necromancy thing, there was a law for a reason, right? Like you, you wonder why there's like stupid rules or stupid laws sometimes. They're there for a reason. And the last petitioner that comes in is a chieftain from Holling Holman. He's like, look, look at those south banks down there, which is kind of by where the docks are. He's like, they look like trash. We need to make them look good because it's just, it's a blight on, on society kind of thing. And he basically just wants us to pour money at it and fix it. And so we came up with a compromise that will probably bite us in the butt later on. But basically we said, you know what, go out, do some research, tell us, give us a proposal. Like a good proposal is what you think we need and we will look at it then and we will decide at that point. 
So at least we were able to push him off for a while, but I feel like he's gonna come back with like some 80 page proposal and we will have no option but to like put a couple gold bar into it. After that we make a quick pit stop so Jan can talk to Sten who's like his right hand man. He wants information about Iver because that's that new city. What is going on there? Can we maybe bring it up from the levels of kind of destitution it's in? I don't know. And then we head off to Viborg because we still have to deal with the fell wizard up there and his little beefy muscle man. I don't, I don't know what he, a fighter? I think he's a fighter. But much to our surprise, Asa, who if you remember used to be Val's like arch enemy, is offering to come with us because she's a paladin now for the Church of Holm. She's very righteous and she used to live in Viborg and she hates a lot of people in Viborg. So she's like, you know what, I'll come with you, I'll help you get in, blah 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 blah. At this point, our entire army is kind of around Viborg. It's barricaded itself. The gates are all locked. Nobody's getting through them or over the wall or whatnot. Like, it's gonna be a siege just like it was in Iver. And it's probably gonna go on for a lot longer if we decide to employ this tactic because there's a necromancer in there. And anybody that dies as the siege goes on is just going to be raised up to be part of his army. This is why necromancy is bad. And on a side note, Roz does have a particular interest in being here because Roz is a Knassi, this necromancer is a Knassi, and the Knassi have an oath that they swear to or they don't swear to, but the ones that swear to the oath, like Roz, have to, you know, deal with oath breakers or people that practice necromancy. So, you know, Roz, even though he might not want to get involved, he has to get involved. This is part of his culture. He has to deal with this fell wizard or die trying, but hopefully not that one. So we're traveling along. It's like a couple days for us to get to Viborg. And on our way there, Val and Rainier and Rodolfo are all doing survival checks, trying to feed us because they all have those skills. Man, Roz would die so fast if he had to do survival checks. Yeah. Anyway, Val comes across a phoenix. Actually, she comes across three phoenixes. Are they phoenix I? Phenai. And while two of them fly away, she tries to engage with one and they talk and she's like, oh, this is what we're doing. And he's like, you know what? I really hate evil things. So if you need me, call me no matter where you are, no matter how far. Okay, maybe he didn't say that. <laughs> now I have that song stuck in my head. But basically she now has a phoenix that she can call to help us out with this necromancer, which is a pretty cool thing. So we continue on our way and eventually we get to Viborg. Among the party there is talk and fear that maybe some of our troops might be spies or something so half the party doesn't want to tell them that we're here and just go inside to the city instead. The other half is like, well somebody should know that we're here just in case. In the end, we end up just going in. The shed that we had to go through to get to the secret entrance that Asa knew about, those guards know that we're going in so at least like five people know where we are in case we need them. Like, yeah. We get into the city and it's pretty much deserted. There's like nothing going on. We make our way, I think we're like going through the sewer basically, and we make our way and we get all the way up to the keep or the castle of Viborg. Still, d no issues. This is, this, this is nice. I like this. Asa kind of takes off to do her own thing and so the six of us get up to the gates and Jan steps forward because Jan is great at deceiving people and he goes, Hey listen, we've got a message for Aldine, which is the name of the fell wizard, from Fulgar. Fulgar's not actually dead, but it's very imperative that I send this message. And he deceives the crap out of them to the point that they're like, yeah, just go ahead. Like at first they were like, you know what, I, I want to give the message because like I want to be, you know, powerful and prestigious and Jan was like, no, I need to do it. And then like I said, his deception check was so strong that they're basically like, yeah, here you go. Are you sure you're not Fulgar? So then we make our way kind of through this courtyard and at the end of the courtyard on this days is sitting this beefcake. Beefcake Thorak, he's that fighter I was talking about earlier. And we go up to him and we're like, hey, you know, we've got a message for Aldine from Fulgar. And he's like, listen, Aldine doesn't want to be disturbed. Like, just tell me what it is. I'm like his second in command. And we're like, no, no, no. And so another deception check. And he's like, yeah, okay. He's not as convinced as the guards were, but convinced enough to let us go. So we go and we're like halfway up the stairs. And then I think like we're trying to be stealthy. And I think Val like hits a suit of armor or something because we are not stealthy. And so Eldine yells like, what's going on? And Jan is like, oh, it's me, Thorak, blah, 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 you know. And he's like, well, you know not to disturb me. 
And so he comes out, and then obviously he's not Thorak, and so a fight begins. And it's nice that there's six of us, but as soon as we start attacking Aldine, Thorak's like, what's that noise? And he comes up behind us, so now we're kind of sandwiched between this beefcake and a fell wizard. And you know, I don't know about you, but that's not a place I want to be, especially as a squishy wizard myself. Fortunately, our initiative rolls were pretty good, so we're laying into Aldine pretty quickly, like Rainier's going up there raging. And so when he finally gets to go, he's like, peace out, and he just dimension doors over to behind Thorak because safety behind his beefcake and also then he's close to the exit so he can peace out. And that actually worked out really well for us because otherwise, like he's a necromancer, he go to kill us real quick, which he then tries to later, like <laughs> we're trying to get through Thorak, he's a beast, you know, Roz is raining down spells at Eldeen because Roz is like, I must kill this fell wizard. And Unfortunately, Roz doesn't quite get him, and then he manages to kill Thorax, so he gets healed because, you know, he did a cloud kill, I think is what it was, on us. It, it's not a good situation. Thorak dies, fortunately, none of us do, and nobody can see anything. They have to get out of this cloud, and, like, Aldine is way far away, but fortunately, Brindis had sleep, so she puts him to sleep because she understands the importance of this, like, blood feud between Roz and Aldine, even though they don't really know each other, but you know, Roz gets the kill, pierced through the heart, gets some blood points, which is awesome. So got rid of a fell wizard, got some blood points. Win, 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 win. But we were all super hurting after that, so there are definitely some healing and some potions and all that. Like, m poor Mr. Wizard Roz was down to like three hit points, I think. It was really close. So now that that is dealt with, we go and we raid his rooms. We find a bunch of treasure and his spell book. So Roz takes the spell book. A lot of the spells either Roz has or isn't interested in having, but there are a few that, you know, might be kind of cool to have in the future. After that, we just kind of rest in the castle and Jan goes and he sneaks his way up to the gate and he basically drops the gate. He's like, oh yeah, gate gatekeeper, I'm just fixing this little screw, it's not working, and the entire gate drops down, and then the army can come in and deal with everything else. Well, we just kind of lick our wounds and heal ourselves over at the castle, and we're like, what took you guys so long to get in here? They were not appreciative. We decide to make Asa the Jarl of the city, or I guess the head of the city, because, you know, she knows it. Also, it'll get her out of Val's hair just in case she wants to do anything else, and, and we trust her enough to run it well and to, you know, support Brindis and stuff, because, you know, Brindis has now put her in place, so it should, should be all good. The army offers us a carriage to get us back to Holling Holman, which is great, because that means that we can heal, we can travel in style, we don't need to use our rations, and we don't need to put an effort to get back to the city. And when we get back to the city, I think it's now summer, and it is time to do domain turns. So Brindis goes first, like, we rule to see who's gonna first, and then we all just defer to let Brindis go first, because Brindis is probably gonna pay us, and you need money sometimes to do your things. So the first thing Brindis does is she builds a road from Hollingholmen to Levica, which is the old capital from Svinnik. That way trade is going to be easier. When the court moves back and forth, it'll be easier. All that fun stuff. She also tries to rule Sarkol, which is that province in the north, and it doesn't go well, if I recall correctly, but that's fine because we're gonna go up there soon because that's where we're planning on having the wedding, most likely, so we can figure out what didn't work, and then we can resolve it that way. Rainier decides to make a hunting guild, so he's now got a holding. It's a level zero holding, so I'll have to wait till next domain turn to level it up and then start to make money, but hey, we're all starting to slowly collect things that we have, and that's exciting. Val then levels up her ship building place, so now her holding is level one, which means that next domain turn she will actually start to make money, and I believe also Regency, so that's super exciting because she has been working on this for a very long time. Roz has a source, and Roz has one ley line, but Roz takes this opportunity to build another ley line, so now instead of being a source eight, Roz has a source 15, which is great, because then Roz gets 15 Regency every turn, which is pretty awesome, because prior to like the last two domain terms, Roz has gotten nothing. So this is very exciting. It went off without a hitch, cost a lot of money. Roz has like 18 gold now, and, and silver and other things, but Roz is super poor. Roz is gonna have to figure something out here. Rainier too takes this turn to level up his church, and it's neat because he got the church at the same time that Roz did 
his source. So, you know, they're kind of doing this together. So he also has a level one holding just like Val does. And in my notes, all I wrote for Jan was Jan. And so I'm not sure what he did. Uh, probably did just a bunch of ruling and stuff because like he has a quite a big empire. So he has to spend a lot of money, but he gets money back and stuff. So it's probably just regular general stuff there but like i said i don't i didn't actually write down what he did and i don't know why and with that that is the end of the session not a lot happened but kind of a big ticket item did happen which is exciting i was actually half afraid that vanthar was going to suddenly summon us in the middle of that battle which he didn't so that was nice but I suspect that probably next session he will and hopefully we have a large party again because if it's only three of us that's it's gonna be kind of hurting. But with that thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.